Hi, I'm Monica. And I'm Frank. And, and we, we want, want you to bake this. this. What are we doing today, Frank? Well, today, Monica, we're going to do a Napoleon. Ooh, sounds fancy. Well, it's not really. It's just a fancy name. Oh. It's made with puff pastry dough. And today I'm using a dough that I bought in the supermarket. And it's, uh, for those who really want it quick, they can go to the supermarket and buy a puff pastry dough already made and roll. Without shame? <laughs> well, without shame. The pastry dough is really a pretty good uh, uh, quality. And it will do the trick okay. for Napoleon. However, if you'd like to know how to make your own, I'm going to do that after this uh, procedure. I'll show you how to make the dough. And, but it's so uh, labor intensive. Yeah, for the purists. It's so labor intensive that that's why uh, most people just buy it. Even bakeries today will buy it because of the labor costs in making this dough. It's, but it's well worth it, I think, because when you make your own dough, you can use butter, which I'm sure is not in the one you purchase at the supermarket. Oh, oh, oh. Which butter really doesn't give it all that lift as the shortening they use in this dough, but it adds so much more flavor. So we will begin by flouring the board, putting our dough down here, and I'm going to roll this dough approximately the size of this sheet pan. This is a 10 by 13 jelly pan. And that is going to be our Napoleon Dough. Frank, you've lined this with parchment paper. Yes, and I would like you to spray that also very lightly because I like okay. this dough also to be able to shrink up easily, very lightly. If we didn't spray it, would it stick? It shouldn't because no, this it, is parchment. No, it wouldn't stick, but I just like the extra spray so the dough, when it bakes, it's going to shrink. And I want it to shrink up evenly. Okay. And it'll slide nicely on that silicone spray. No, it's a vegetable spray. Oh, it's a vegetable I, spray. What this I'd like to explain is Monica's rolling pin and uh, it's never, been so never. Well, anyway, that's Monica's rolling pin, and uh, since we're Monica, well, who told you not to bring your own, Frank? So I'm going to have to really put some muscle into this. Usually, the rolling pin does the rolling, and you really don't have to. But this one. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Matt. Okay. really do, as you see. It's always worked fine for me. Well, you know, for the normal housewife, it probably is fine. If you're I like rolling that. out one cookie at a time, it would be <laughs> wonderful. But when you're trying to roll out a big sheet like this, a oh, slightly, something manly? <laughs> you got it. Uh, this would be uh, done already had we had a slightly bigger. Now, you know sometimes it's going to stick to the table, so you just brush a little more flour under it, like that. Okay. And continue. Oh, there we go. How thin do you have to get this? Well, it's got to be about a quarter inch to an eighth inch to a quarter inch thick. Oh, now, is this is going to blow up in the oven, like a balloon. You mean puff up? Like, yes, yeah. it is. Not blow up like a bomb, no. No. no we, we don't do that. I bet I know what you're going to do to keep it from totally air pocketing. And what would that be? Are you going to lay it on this sheet of parchment paper and prick it with a fork? Exactly. Ah. Now let's know. say it's too thin and it's too long, such as, could you pick that? Sure, Thank Frank. You. Now I'm going to measure it out like that. Look at that, see? It's too long, but it's not wide enough. So what I do, you run into that problem, is a little more flour on the table here. Okay. Do you ever use a ruler or measuring tape when you're doing something like this to guide you from the start, or you just go? We're not contractors, Monica. We're not building a bridge. You know, we don't need measuring tapes. We are professional, Monica. Apparently, Frank, you do need some sort of guidance because... Well, Monica, everything can be done without rulers or measuring tapes. As you see, I'm going to explain. Now I want to roll it that way without rolling it too much thinner, so I'm going to shrink it up a little bit like this. Like that, like this, and then I'm going to roll the width. Try to get it like that. Would it help you if I held this like right next to you, or <laughs> perhaps like that as you roll? Yeah, because you because you hold it over the dough while I. That would be so much helpful. I mean, I'm just trying to guide you, Frank. A little more flour over the top. I love the flour. In my uh, <coughs> studio, I'd be using my hands to sprinkle. See, I'd have a little bowl of flour and it'd be sprinkled. Right. Right. You know, this is yours. It's so limited here. Yes, yes. Small rolling pins, small. Right. 
hope your, I bet your husband has a big role in pinning this. Well, he doesn't do much baking, Frank. Well, <laughs> he, um, he's more of a grilling guy. A grilling guy. But he has a really long fork. <laughs> Otherwise, well, you burn your hand. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah, right, right. Well, <laughs> it's all about safety. Mm hmm. Yes. Well, you're pretty safe with this, let me tell you. Yes! <laughs> That's someone I beat him over the now, head with it. Okay. Monica? We, oui. Francois? Usually, when I have a large red pin, I will take it right oh, off. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right Frank. So we're going to put that away. And now, you're going to bring that over here, and I'm going to lift this up. Okay. Oops, there we go. There we go. Now it's plenty long and plenty wide. Yes, it is, but that's good because you know it's going to shrink in the oven. You have to allow for shrinkage. Yes, you do. You know about shrinkage. Well, doesn't every professional? Well, I guess you watch Seinfeld. So. I swim a lot, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there. Now this is going to, we're going to just move that in like this. And it's good that it's a little bit bigger than the pan because, like I say, it's going to shrink up after you bake it. Okay. So. Now, you want it up the sides. Oh, you're going to let it just hang off the sides like No, no, oh. up, I mean up here. Oh, oh okay. Like I thought you were going to let it dangle. <clears throat> no. Now, a really cool way, a really cool way of cutting that extra dough off instead of using a pair of scissors or a fork, is just rolling the rolling pin right over the edge. Hey, that really makes good. a nice and neat. It certainly does. It makes it pretty even. Wow, I like that, Frank. Oh, yes. Very nice look. We could have had a little more up the sides, but... Let's show the people at home what a perfect cut that made. Just by using the rolling pin well, you know, and not struggling with a knife or a pair of that's, scissors. That's uh, using intelligence. Oh, naturally. I, just, more. I, I would like to show you also before I continue that if you have extra dough like this, you can save it. But since puff pastry is made with layers of fat and dough, fat and dough, you don't want to bunch it up in a bowl. You want to keep it layered, and that's what gives it actual puff. When it bakes, those, the, the fat or the butter in between the layers of dough melts, creates steam, and gives it that lift, that really uh, flaky, flaky texture in the dough. So I'm going to take this piece of dough, and I'm going to keep it in layers, and I can fold it over again, and then I can also... And he said I was frugal? But that, well, actually, it's not frugal. What is it, Frank? Well, you don't want to throw it it's out. It's a one-inch strip of dough. Yes, it is a one-inch strip of dough. But if we make more items with the puff pastry, we're going to have more than one inch of dough. And then you can turn that into something like palm ears, you know, which are palm leaves. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. Okay. I've palm been ears. to diner. <laughs> They're also called pig's ears, elephant ears. Elephant ears. Yes, yeah. many, many names for the same product. But And you can also use this uh, for other items that you, know, that you don't need... It won't puff up as high as the original, but it will still get flaky. How are you going to store that? Hmm? How are you going to store it? Wrap it in plastic. You can keep it in the freezer Let's a year, at least a year. Well, okay, for now. We will do that. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I believe in the right tool for the job. But if I were only making that, I would probably discard that. However, Later we'll be making many things like puff pastry and we could keep adding to that. Okay. And then Sounds like a plan. It sure is. Now, before we put this in the oven. Yes, sir. We're going to prick this with a fork. Oh, Frank. Would you find a fork for me? You do have that here, don't you, Mike? You do use forks? You know? Yes, Just is it large this? enough for you? <laughs> yes. Where's Mike's large fork? Is this the one you were talking about? For grilling, no. Oh, okay. And this we're doing because if we didn't prick this with a fork, such as you would with a pie, bottom of the pie or whatever, it would balloon up like a pillow. And, and we steam. don't want it. The steam wouldn't be able to escape. And we don't want this to balloon up like a pillow. We want it to... Well, you're not sleeping on it. We want, we want it to... No. <laughs> no, no, no. you might. In the bakery, we have a special tool for this. It's called a roller docker, and it looks like a medieval device. It's on, a, <laughs> it's on a rolling pin such as this, but a little bit shorter, and it's got spikes sticking out all around oh, it. Oh, I the handle, that. And you just run it up and down, up and down, which creates all the holes. Saves time. We, we want you to bake this. this.